Chicago's new mayor is taking on political corruption in her first official act. Lori Lightfoot signed an executive order yesterday that limits the power of Chicago's city council members. She's the first African-American woman and first openly LGBTQ person to lead her city. Lightfoot spoke with CTM national correspondent Jerika Duncan in her first national interview as mayor. Jerika, good morning. Good morning. She definitely has a lot on her plate, but she says she is ready. A former prosecutor is now running the nation's third largest city. Democrat Lori Lightfoot says her priorities include public, public safety, education, and tackling the city's $42 billion debt. Well, to succeed, she'll have to take on Chicago's political machine, and she'll be doing it as an outsider. You're introduced many times as the first female African-American openly gay mayor of Chicago. Does that bother you at all? No, no, no. It's a great testament to, I think, the spirit of our city in the moment that we're in. I'm honored that people of the city look beyond labels um, and voted for me. Five foot one in Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot is known to have an outsized ability to fight. Something she says she learned from her 90 year old mother. She's my role model, my champion. Who was there to witness her daughter's historic inauguration Monday. For me to come from where I come from with my family's um, heritage and the sacrifices that both of my parents made, it means everything that she was here to witness this moment. A moment that was realized on April 2nd when Lightfoot declared victory. President Trump did call you to congratulate you. What was that conversation like between you and President Trump? Well, it was very cordial. Does it bother you to see the city criticized by the president on Twitter when it comes to gun violence? Of course. How do you work with a president who says he wants to work with you but has definitely gone on his Twitter account and criticized Chicago and the gun violence? What the hell is going on in Chicago? Well, look, my values are not his values on a range of different issues. But I think that I have an obligation to the residents of the city, particularly the taxpayers, to do everything I can to make sure that we get our fair share of dollars from Washington, D.C. Onward! Onward! Lightfoot rose to political prominence after chairing a police accountability task force in the wake of the deadly 2014 police shooting of teenager Laquan McDonald. It led to citywide protests, national anger, and a murder conviction against the officer who shot him. We have been embarked on what I would call a proactive strategy that looks at our gun violence um, as a public health crisis, which is what it is. That means we look at the root causes of the violence. That means we invest in neighborhoods. We re-stitch together our broken social safety But net. what does invest in neighborhoods mean? That what mean, does that look like? It means like? that we bring resources to communities so that they can grow, that we work on providing wraparound services and job training in the neighborhoods um, that are under siege and economically distressed. You talked a lot about this coming down to communities trusting police mm -hmm. and the police also trusting the communities. Right. How do you bridge that gap? Police can't be successful if they're not viewed as legitimate by the community, and the community will not be safe if the police are not engaged in a respectful constitutional partnership uh, with the community. And the only way to do it is person by person. There's no magic solution. She says her biggest fear is seeing children who feel, quote, penned down by gun violence. But she is extremely optimistic, saying she hopes to see a decrease in gun violence as early as this summer. And it wasn't just a historic day for Lightfoot. For the first time in Chicago's history, women of color now hold three city wide elected offices, as you can see right there. It's pretty. She came in an extraordinary wave of support because she won every ward in the yeah. city. She sure did. It's lovely to see her mother there at the ceremony, age 90, but yeah. she's also got a brother, right, who's been in and out of prison. How does that color her politics? Yeah, we asked her that question about how does that inform your decisions, and she basically said that she's focused on making sure there are adequate reentry programs because you have thousands of people from the prison systems going into the streets that she's trying to help and save. Yeah. So very optimistic. We look forward to following up to see what yeah. Chicago looks been, like a year from now. What she's been very about. candid and transparent about it, most thing, about everything so far in her life. It, she's made it clear there are going to be some changes around here in Chicago. It'll yeah, be interesting so. to see how that turns out for her. Absolutely. Thank you, Jerika. Thank, Thank you. you very much.